time zones are a little tricky. Normally, they help us keep somewhat normal time of day in relation to the position of the sun in our area. However, since time zones define how we live and time is so fundamental to our understanding of the universe, traveling across time zones can feel a lot like time travel. Usually, the time change is so insignificant that no one really cares about the time difference, but if you could travel back in time by an entire day by just taking a short walk, you might feel a little bit more like a time lord. This isn't possible with your average time zone boundary, so we have to look at the outliers. One outlier in the world of time zones is Australia. Normally, there are three traditionally aligned time zones with vertical separators, but daylight savings time changes things. The four easternmost states and territories of Australia decided to adjust their clocks by increments of 30 minutes on daylight savings time, or not at all. This results in some of the most peculiar time zones in the world, and it also means that there exist three points where three different time zones meet up together. All of this time zone craziness in Australia can be a little strange, but it hardly means that you can travel through time. In order to feel like we're traveling through time, the time change between two points needs to be fairly significant. Something might feel a little bit more like time travel if we could step out of our office at the end of a workday and instantly be transported back to a time 8 or even 12 hours earlier. Usually this isn't possible without a long haul flight, and even then, that time travel journey takes time but not in Antarctica. Antarctica sits at the joining point of every line of longitude on the globe. Since time zones are usually bordered by these lines, you might think that Antarctica keeps roughly 20 or 30 different time zones, but nothing could be further from the truth. Since the southernmost continent on the globe is inhabited by researchers and millions of cute little penguins, the traditional method of establishing time zones could cause some trouble. For example, if every time zone came down and met at the South Pole, it would result in over 20 conical sections of the continent continent that kept different times. The South Pole would then be a theoretical point where moving any distance away from it would allow you to be in any time zone, respectively. Since penguins don't wear watches, there's really no point in going to all this hassle just to keep time. So the currently accepted time zone structure in Antarctica tends to follow the local time of the nationality of the researchers inhabiting each region. There are a variety of different research stations across the continent, each keeping their own standard of time. On occasion, different areas will keep the same time as their supply station, resulting in the borders of Antarctica's time zones being even more strange. Since Antarctica also experiences extreme day and night cycles due to the rotation of the Earth, daytime and nighttime are also relative down there anyway. Time zones in Antarctica are essentially just good for keeping up with data, managing supplies, and trying to get some semblance of normalcy. But all of this lands us at a rather interesting juncture. What is the shortest distance we can travel in Antarctica while also traveling through the greatest length of time? Finding this would allow us to maximize our time traveling while leveraging the least amount of work. The easy answer would be simply traveling across the time zone lines between the light pink and the dark green sections here. During daylight savings time, the light pink area would be UTC plus 13 and the dark green zone would be UTC minus 6. Stepping foot across this line would result in an instantaneous time change of about minus 19 hours, but this first route might be a little too simple if you're not a penguin. Antarctica is not very populated, and due to the lack of infrastructure, making that journey wouldn't be the easiest. Staying focused on the same area of Antarctica, we're left with McMurdo Station at the bottom tip of the continent, here. This station follows daylight savings time and keeps the time of UTC plus 12 or plus 13, respectively. If we start our time travel journey here and travel to the point where the next time zone starts, we're left with what is likely the easiest, shortest distance one could travel while traveling through the most amount of time. Say the researchers at McMurdo Station had a 2010 Cessna Skyhawk at their disposal able to take a trip to the edge of the UTC minus 6 time zone. They would need to travel a total distance of 616.94 miles. Neglecting the takeoff and landing time, traveling at the Skyhawk's top speed of 142.92 miles per hour would allow the researchers to reach the next time zone in about four and a half hours. Upon arrival, they would find that they actually made the trip in negative 14 and a half hours due to the time change, traveling back in time by about half a day. 
So, traveling from McMurdo Station in Antarctica across its adjacent time zone border is one of the best places in the world if you're looking to time travel on dry land or on a short flight. The International Dateline provides you with a little bit more bang for your buck in terms of time change, but when you consider the long-haul flight or cruise necessary to cross it, Antarctica yields you a better time travel ratio. So, Antarctica's time zones are a little crazy, but they also allow you to time travel back in time. Of course, all of this doesn't really mean anything other than annoyingly having to set your watches back, but hey, we have to take what we can get when it comes to time travel. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments section below.